I don't know if you've noticed lately, but there's a lot going on. There's a lot changing in our sport, and this is not necessarily going to be the show where we lower the pinata from the ceiling and we bang on everything that we don't like. But there is an argument out there that I think it's long past time for us to discuss. Paul Feinbaum had us on his show the other day, and he was very nice to welcome us. We walked over the street to Bridgestone Arena, and we had a kind of a long forum, multi segment conversation. And one of the things that came up was Paul said, Hey, a lot of stuff's going on, and a lot of people seem to be complaining about it, but TV ratings are up, right? Viewership's up. Interest in the sport seems to be up. And so the natural conclusion that some draw, he wasn't, but he was tossing it out there, offering that some are drawing the conclusion that must mean that good decisions are being made, right? And uh, that's not always the case. Now, you know that we've, we've loosely broached this a time or two, but I want to dive into this. I, I don't think you're dumb if you feel this way, because less than 0.01% of you have any background in the media or television industry. You don't need to know this stuff. You don't need to know how to interpret it, but you do know college football. You do love it if you're watching this show. And you want what is in its best interest, even if you and I occasionally may disagree as to what that is. So there's some arguments being made in what I think are bad faith. And those arguments sound like this. Hey, yeah, NIL's really crazy right now and the portal's crazy and kids are moving all over the place and there's not much stability, but TV ratings are up, so that must mean the sport's totally fine. I could easily see how someone would think that not knowing any better. I don't happen to feel that way. But that argument's not being made in bad faith. The argument that's being made in bad faith is someone who knows better. Someone who stands to gain from a lot of the changes that are happening, which are negatively impacting many. A few are profiting off of it. And I'm not even talking about the players right now. Listen, those folks in those rooms making those decisions last week, I don't think had the players or the fans at the forefront of their minds. So, Pardon me if I don't have the players at the forefront of what I'm talking about right this second. It is a player's show. You guys know that. But at this very moment in time, I'm looking at holistically the sport of college football. And some of the decisions made, I may not necessarily feel are pushing the sport forward. But there are other people who know that, but hope that you don't know that when they say TV ratings are up, that's not the best metric in the moment to be using. So... I was on Five Bomb Show the other day and we talked about this. And I thought probably, I was thinking to myself, it's the best that we've gone in depth on this anywhere I've been on the air. So I felt like, hey, we got a show Sunday. Why don't we talk about it? I want to ask you guys a question. Um, take however long you want to to answer. I'll be looking at the comments afterwards. You can hit me wherever. Because um, I'm interested to see if your answer on this is what my answer is. Uh, how should I put it? L let me ask you this way. What do you think sells about college football? What makes it as great as you and I think it is? Because I think it's the spirit of college football. I think that's what it is. Now, you can sum that up many different ways. You can talk about tradition. You can talk about pageantry, what a Saturday in the fall means. You can talk about college football having elements unto it that don't exist in any other sport, whether it be pro or college. It's seeing, you know, the same people on campus that you've seen for 40 years a few Saturdays out of the fall. It's seeing freshman classes come in and work their way up the ladder. And then as seniors, they hopefully do what Michigan's guys just did this past year. And they've got confetti raining down on them. And it's about choosing the university. It is about, in a utopian nature, the blend of athletics and education. That doesn't really exist anywhere aside from college football, because we're talking about the sport of football here. And that's changing. Okay, a lot of that's changing. Now, that's not necessarily anything we can control. Uh, you can like it, you can not like it. I've long since spoken my piece on that. But some people believe that using present day viewership and audience trends to measure whether good decisions are being made is sound logic. And that's not sound logic at all. The impact on the sport in terms of audience trends are well downstream of any decisions that are made. You guys see this at your place of work. I don't care if you drive a Pepsi truck, you work at a bread factory, you sell insurance for a living, you got ownership in the building that doesn't know what they're doing, but it's a strong organization, they just took over. Well, if they make a bad decision today, does the company crumble today? Of course it doesn't. If you're out in nature, I'm a storm chaser, this time of year is really active for me. Now, my number one fear in life is lightning. Your number one fear in life should be lightning, by the way. But especially if you're a storm chaser, it's not the tornadoes that get you, because at least you can see those. Lightning comes out of nowhere. But just say you're not a storm chaser, say you're a normal human being, 
and you see lightning strike fairly close, but still off in the distance a little bit, what do you know to do? If it's really powerful, it's really bright, it's cloud to ground, it's CG lightning as we call it, what do you know to do? You know to tense up. Because the lightning's not over once the light fades, the lightning's over once three or four seconds later, the thunder happens. Why does it take a little while? Well, we know sound travels a lot slower than light. Therefore, the sound that emanates from a lightning strike is a little bit delayed. It's no different in decision making, both good and bad. You know, there's a town on the Mississippi River, not just Mississippi. Great people there. I happen to be there a fair amount when we're storm chasing, although I didn't plan it that way. Those folks know that even if it's been sunny for weeks in Natchez, Mississippi, if they've had flooding in Missouri or Iowa or Minnesota to get ready because they're downstream and they're literally on the banks of the Mississippi River. And what happens up there is eventually going to make its way down here. Now, all of these things make perfect sense. And you listen to that and you go, OK, yeah, duh. Well, yes, that's my point. Duh. If you make catastrophic decisions in college football today, it doesn't immediately erase decades of fan equity that's been built up. I used to watch pro wrestling. I don't anymore. I didn't stop overnight. I used to watch NASCAR. I don't anymore. I didn't stop overnight. I've loved college football my entire life. I don't ever plan on leaving it. But not all of you are what you would call P1 viewers or P1 fans in the media industry. Uh, actually, you guys probably are, but there are a lot of folks on the periphery they could take it or leave it. And if what you're in love with is the spirit of college football and the spirit starts to erode, not immediately, but over a period of years, you don't think that college football could suffer the same fate that some of those other sports do. Do you, do you think college football is immune to that? I know in, the, in, in our country, the sport of football could seem right now like it's immune to that. I don't think it is. Now, that sounds kind of doom and gloomish. The good news is we're, we're not even close to being too far down that road for things to U-turn. And in some cases, I don't think it's like we're going a million miles an hour down that road. Um, I just think stuff like this needs to be spoken about on the front end because once you do get down that road, you learn that really no amount of good decisions can turn it around overnight. You know, as far as it, as long as it took to get down that road, sometimes it takes that long to come back to. And I'm not interested in a prolonged period of drought in college football. People can mess up things to the left and right, but what I'm focused on, please, let's not mess that up. So I know that it's a brave new world and we're all living in it right now. And I know a lot of changes are happening. Um, some of them may positively impact your program or not, but I would encourage you to zoom it out and look at the sport of college football because at the end of the day, even though you may think, hey, I live in Little Rock, Arkansas, what am I going to do about it? Well, you individually, nothing, candidly, nothing. Um, 10,000 of you, 100,000 of you, million of you, they have to pay attention to you. You understand the entire value proposition of these media rights deals has baked into them that you will be there. That's the reason they're so valuable. It's not because someone in a suit's intellect is valuable. It's because someone in a suit happens to have their hands on the wheel of a sport that's really popular because you made it popular. So what happens if you're not there? I am not suggesting a walkout or a boycott or anything like that, but I am saying you think your voice doesn't matter and you're wrong. They hope you feel that way because that makes you feel insignificant and they can do whatever they want no matter how you feel. Uh, that's not the case. That's not the case. People get fired really, really quick. There's kind of a hair trigger when billions are spent and a few percentage points of audience have trended out the door. So don't ever feel like your voice doesn't matter in this stuff. I promise you, you sit in on some of the meetings I'm in. I promise you your voice matters a lot more than they may want you to think it matters.